What's up video makers? Mika here from motioncraver.com and in this video we're going to be taking a look deep inside the Motion Pro kit and I'll be showing you how to make your best edit yet using the thousands of included assets. Now a quick note, you can jump around to different parts of the video by using the chapters down below or by heading down to the description and clicking on the time code links. But of course, we have to start with the most popular category, the drag and drop transitions. So when you purchase the Motion Pro kit, you download a zip file. Once you open that zip file, go ahead and head over to the MP Transitions folder, and you're gonna wanna open that up. Next, pick the folder that matches the resolution of your project, and then go ahead and double click to open one of those category files or one of the All Transitions files. If you get a message telling you that the file needs to be converted, just click OK and you're good to go. Now if for some reason you get a link media message, it's OK. Don't worry. It's really easy to link the media again. Just click that locate button at the bottom of the pop-up window and make sure that display only exact name matches is enabled. Next, navigate to the Motion Pro Kit folder, the MP Transitions folder, and select the Assets folder. Click search and Premiere is going to do the work for you. Once that first file is found, click that OK button and the other files should connect automatically. Now that that's done, you have access to the transitions. Go ahead and create a new file or open up the project that you're already working on. And first you need to disable the nest function at the very top of your project's timeline. Let me show you how you can save time and space by only bringing in those cool transitions that perfectly fit your project. To do this, head over to the Motion Pro Kit transitions file and open up the folder for the transitions you want to use. Then head all the way down to the bottom of the project window and turn on icon view. This is going to let you preview the transitions. Found something you like? Perfect. Select that transition and then head back over to your project's timeline. I want you to find the V1 track and deselect both sides of it. Why? The V1 track is where the preview video sits. So by deselecting it, you'll be able to add the transitions without the preview video. Let's head back to the transitions project and click, hold and drag the transition from the Motion Pro project into the timeline of your project. But make sure you place the visible layers above your footage and align the cut of the transition with the cut of your two clips. Nice, right? But let's say you want to change the resolution. It couldn't be easier. Select the change size here sequence that is now in your project file. Right click and choose sequence settings. Then enter the desired resolution in the sequence settings. And boom, all of the transitions will automatically update to the new resolution. Now, if you're using a transition with graphics, you can resize them by using the scale and position properties in the effect controls, or right click and choose scale to frame size. You can add even more transitions as well as some cool effects by installing the Motion Pro presets. To do this, head on over to the effects panel and click on the three line icon. In the menu that shows up, select Import Presets. Then go to the Motion Pro Kit file, open up the MP Presets folder, and select the Motion Pro Presets file. Now, all of the Motion Pro Presets will appear inside the Effects panel. To use them, just drag and drop them onto your footage. Now, you might be thinking, OK, that's cool, but what about the graphic transitions? Well, here's how you can quickly install all of the essential graphic animations, including the Mogert transitions. First, open the Motion Pro Kit folder. Then you want to copy the MP Mogert graphics folder and paste it into the following path. If you're on a Windows machine, open up your system hard drive, go to the user folder, click on your username, select app data. Wait, you can't see the app data folder? Quick fix. Head up to the top menu and choose View, and make sure that Hidden Items is selected. There you go, the App Data folder is revealed. Now you can open it and the Roaming folder, open the Adobe folder, 
the Common folder, and the Motion Graphics Templates folder. This is where you're going to paste the MP Mogra Graphics folder that you copied. Don't worry, I didn't forget about my Mac users. After you copy the MP Mogra Graphics folder, you want to open up your system hard drive, open the folder with your username, and open the library folder. Surprise, surprise, this is the hidden folder on the Mac machine. So if you don't see the library folder, here's your quick fix. From the finder, select Go menu at the top of the screen and choose Go to Folder. In the window that opens, type in tilde forward slash library and then click Go. Now that you can see the library folder, open it and open the application support folder, open the Adobe folder, open the common folder, and the Motion Graphics Templates folder. And this is where you will paste the MP Mogurt Graphics folder that you copied. Now that you've got all of your professional motion graphics installed, here's how you can add them to your project. Open the Essential Graphics panel, if it isn't already open, by going to Window, Essential Graphics. In the Browse tab, you can use the search bar to find assets you're looking for. All of the Motion Pro Mogurt assets start with the letters MP and are labeled by category, subcategory, as well as some descriptive words. But you can also add and access folders easily by choosing the Manage Additional Folders. This is my favorite way to work. For your convenience, you can hover over the thumbnails to preview the animations. And once you've found just what you're looking for, go ahead and click, hold, and drag it into the timeline. If it doesn't show up right away, just give it a couple of seconds. Bear in mind that all of the Mogurt elements are created in 4K resolution to bring you the best quality. But if you're working in a different resolution, just choose scale to frame size to fit the graphics to the resolution of your project. Then you can either use the scale and position properties in the effect controls or head back to the essential graphics panel and use the edit tab to make your adjustments. Want the graphic to be longer or shorter? Change the duration by dragging the end of the Mogurt layer to shorten or lengthen the layer. Another quick note, some of the title animations use custom fonts. You can find the links for the free fonts in the fonts folder. Or you could just dismiss the font message and use the default replacement fonts. And just like that, you're ready to use as many graphics as you want. But I've got a few tips to help you get the best results when you're using Mogurt files. Tip number one, set the light leak transitions, overlays, as well as any text animations that happen to have a glow or blur effect on them to add or screen in the blend mode setting in the effect controls panel. Trust me, those graphics will look way better when you do this. Tip number two, place the transition animations so that the cut of your two clips is hidden by the full screen part of the animation. And finally, tip number three, if you don't like the ending animation of a graphic, you can cut the layer before the out animation starts and then click, hold and drag the new end of the layer to extend the resting part of the animation. Now that graphic is not moving unless you add animation of your own. If you want more ideas on how to use the graphics, or you just want to save some time, you can use the pre-made scenes. To do this, go to the Motion Pro Kit folder, open up the folder named MP Scenes and Social Posts, and click the link in the README document to download the Scenes and Social Posts zip file. Okay, so now the file is downloaded, go ahead and extract it and open one of the category files or one of the All Scenes or All Social Posts files. Instead of importing all of those scenes and social posts, use this method, which will allow you to use a scene more than once and edit each copy independently. You should have the project file for the scenes or social posts open. And if it isn't already, turn on icon view so that you can preview the scenes or social posts. You need to disable the nest function at the very top of your project's timeline. Look through, find the scene or social post that you want to use, select it, and then turn off the V1 track. Again, that's where the preview video is, and we wanna add the scene without the preview. After that's done, click, hold, and drag the scene or social post from the Motion Pro project file into the timeline of your 
project. Once you've got the scene in your project, double click on the scene sequence layer to open it up and make some edits. If the scene has a media placeholder, double click on the placeholder sequence as well. Then just drag and drop your image or video into the open placeholder sequence. Make sure that you place it above the locked layers in the placeholder. You can center or resize your media by choosing scale to frame size or by using the scale and position motion controls found in the effect controls panel. Don't see the panel? Just choose window effect controls. Most of the scenes also have some graphics layers. To edit those, just select the Mogur graphics layer and make adjustments in the edit tab of the essential graphics window. You can also delete layers and add graphics and effects that better suit your project. The best thing about the scenes is that you can change the placement, the duration, and the size of all of the elements individually. Just use the scale and position motion controls in the effect controls panels to get your desired look. Moving right along, let me show you how you can show more than one video or image at the same time using the split frames. First, head over to the Motion Pro Kit folder, open up the split frame folder, and you can choose either one of the category files or the all split frames project file. Just double click to open, then go to the bottom of the project window and turn on icon view if you haven't already. Just like with the transitions and the scenes, you want to make sure that the nesting function is disabled. Preview the split frames, find the one that you want, select it, and then turn off the V1 track because you want to see your footage and not the preview. Then click hold and drag the split frame from the Motion Pro Kit file into the timeline of your project. Again, doing it this way is gonna let you add the split frames more than once and add different content to the copies independently. Then double click on each of the nested sequences that make up the split frame. It varies for each split frame, but you just wanna double click until you get to that placeholder sequence. And once it's open, you can drag and drop your videos or images into the placeholder sequence. Place your media above the locked layers and center using the scale to frame size option, or you can just use the scale and position controls in the effect controls panel. Repeat these steps to add content to each placeholder that makes up the split frame, and you're done. Well, not quite. You might wanna change the split frame duration. If that's the case, first you wanna change the duration of your content if needed. Then go to the out point of your image or video layer and copy the time code from the top of the timeline window. Now head back to each of the nested clips and paste the time code. Then click, hold, and drag any layers in the nested sequence to your new desired out point. Repeat these steps until you get to the main sequence. Again, you wanna paste the time code Click, hold, and drag the end of the main split frame sequence layer until you reach the desired out point. And now your video is ready to export. When it comes to exporting videos from Premiere, you've got two options. You can use the built-in tools or you can use Adobe Media Encoder. I'm gonna show you how to get this done both ways. Let's say you wanna use the built-in option. Choose File, Export, Media, Click the format dropdown to choose your file type. Then click next to output name to change the name of the file and where you want to save it to. I like to turn on render with maximum depth and use maximum render quality to get better results. Click the export button at the bottom of the window. Then sit back and relax while your awesome video gets exported. Now let's say you wanna go with option number two. You can render using Adobe Media Encoder by choosing file, export media, and then clicking the Q button at the bottom of the pop-up window. It'll take a few seconds for Adobe Media Encoder to open up. You can click in the format column to change the format, then click under output file to change the name of the file and choose where you want to save it to. Now just click the green play button to render and you are done.
Thank you for joining me for this video. If you found the video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the Motion Craver channel for more tips and tutorials to help you make more, work less, and make your best edit yet. That's it, we're done, and I will see you in the next video.